Uh, so for this part, we're going to take this, um, for the most part, flat surface and introduce a series of three-dimensional boxes mapped onto it based on the grid divisions. Uh, so right now we've got two superimposed surfaces. We've got the loft and the subdivided surface. I'm just going to turn the preview off on the loft. So now we've just got the subdivided surface. What we want to do is um, go under the XForm tab and uh, bring in a surface box. And this is asking for a base surface, a surface domain, and the height of the surface box. What we'll do is we'll bring in the subdivided surface as the base surface. The domain are the divisions that we had introduced. And then you can see that it's actually got a height that's starting to be visible, and that's because the preset is to 1. So we can either input our height, but let's do it um, with another slider. Actually, I'll just copy one of these. So now what it's doing is uh, introducing these boxes that are projecting from the surface. Um, and in this case, they're projecting inwards rather than outwards. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll just change the range from change it from minus 10 to 0, let's say. Or actually, yeah, that's good. So it's 0, and then down to minus 10, they start to project out. So what we can do is we can actually fill these boxes with other geometry. Um, so again, we've got kind of superimposed things, so I'm going to turn off the subdivided surface. So now we've just got the surface boxes. And you can imagine that there's some kind of geometry that we can map across the facade by fitting it within that box. And to do that, um, we'll start off with just a quick study. Uh, we'll make some kind of surface that is, I'm going to explode this rectangle. I'll take this side and let's turn its points on by hitting F10. What I want to do is be able to uh, curve this vertically, so I'll rebuild this one, um, change its degree to 3 and its points to 3, and then when I turn its points back on, I can grab those two points and move them vertically, say like that. And now what I'm going to do is loft. So here I'm doing all this in Rhino, none of this is Grasshopper. Just going to loft those two curves. Let's get rid of get rid of that and that. I'm going to loft. I'll take that. Erase the original curves, and then set this as a geometry, bring this into, into Grasshopper. So again, go back to the parameters command uh, and go to, say, surface. And then I'll set one surface, make it that. And then what I want to do is I want to be able to map this on to our facade. And I can do that um, by going back to XForm and under the morph command, do what's called a box morph, where it says morph an object into a twisted box. So here it's asking for base geometry, the reference box, and the target box. So let's call, so this is our base geometry. And then our target box is going to be all of these surface boxes. And the one thing that it still needs uh, to make this work is a reference box, and that's essentially a bounding box around the object. So we need to give Grasshopper a bounding box, and we can do that by going back to the surface menu, and under primitive, choose bounding box. And then it's looking for the geometry to contain, and that's really all we need to feed in right now. So you'll notice that a bounding box has come around the object. And then we can feed that in as our reference box. 
So once we do that, you'll see, and especially if I turn off the original um, surface boxes, you'll see that those are now mapped onto the surface. So here I'm going to adjust the rotation um, by taking the original box, rotating it minus 90. Let's see how that works. I'll rotate it 180. Yeah, like that. Um, so we'll stop here and then uh, go through what we can do with this in the next uh, in the next part.